Hey, you know what's awesome? Voting. Hell yeah, voting was so awesome. I want everyone to know how awesome voting is. Well, luckily you can. Fair Fight is a grassroots organization started by Stacey Abrams in Georgia. Their mission is to fight for voters' rights and encourage people to vote. There's a Senate runoff election in Georgia on Tuesday, January 5th. They're focusing their efforts on those races now with volunteers and donations, so that's certainly one way we can help folks vote right now. That's so good to hear. I almost feel kind of okay about the future. It will be a hard fight, but progress is definitely being made. Well, until then, let's roll the video. This is not a Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi. This, though, despite appearances that would trip up your TensorFlow model, is not a Pi. This is the Atmega Zero microcontroller. It's a board created by Eddie Spinel, aka 4Hacker, that's based on a 32U4 chip. What makes it stand out is that it's in the form factor of a Raspberry Pi Zero. It even has an SD card slot and an OLED display port in the same spot as the Zero's camera. Uh, full disclosure, Eddie sent this out for me to look at, and that's what we're about to do. Having a 32U4 means that it can be used with the Arduino IDE and all associated libraries. The 32U4 also allows for USB device recognition, such as for keyboards, mice, MIDI, etc. All that fun stuff. There are a few add-on boards for the Atmega Zero 2. So far, there's a prototyping shield, a LiPo battery shield, and the learning shield, which features three LEDs, a buzzer, and a button, giving me kind of similar vibes to the concept of a Circuit Playground Express. What excites me the most about the Atmega Zero, though, is its kinship with the Raspberry Pi. With its matching GPIO, can it support Pi hats and bonnets? You know, anything that you could put on your little pie head? Could this be an option for utilizing those lovely pieces of hardware with Arduino? Well, first things first, we've got to set up the board. There is documentation on the Atmega Zero website on getting started. The setup is fairly standard, but I have to admit, I was a bit rusty on their Arduino IDE, having been using CircuitPython and Moo almost exclusively for the better part of a year. There's a few pieces of example code as well, so let's try that. We've got the Hello World Blink, and it works as expected, blinking away the onboard LED. Good sign. There's also some OLED example code, which includes images for how to properly attach the screen, something that I personally always need. Uh, you do need the Adafruit SSD 1306 library, which requires the Adafruit bus library, but then you'll get that nice logo going on the OLED. But now for hats, bonnets, any board named for headwear, but meant for a pie. I decided to start with the pie glow because it's a classic, it's small, and it's actually just regular run-of-the-mill LEDs being controlled by a PWM chip, the SN3218. Upon searching, I found that there was a GitHub repo to port the pie glow to Arduino. Huzzah! Coincidentally, this repo is by Gadgetoid, who is the lead software dev at Pi Moroni. Uh, there was a couple things I had to adjust in the code based on forums and a little bit of my own instincts. I guess I'm not that terrible at C. Uh, but then we were rolling, or, or glowing, I guess. G glowing. I'm gonna go with glowing. And up next, I wanted to try out the Kibo board, also from Pi Moroni. I love macros and clicky keys, but I had held off on setting up this board um, with the Pi because it uses its own OS. Um, and as I've said before, I'm, I'm lazy. Yeah. Uh, using a 32U4 with it though, it's fairly low key. Ha ha ha. Um, so it seemed like kind of this natural choice. Like, you know, you're just gonna plug it onto the board, plug in the board and then you're, you're going. I was able to get the first key keyboarding. However, I had a sad discovery for the second key. Uh, you see uh, physical pin 15 on a Raspberry Pi is a regular digital IO pin, but on the Atmega Zero, it is the analog reference pin. Button two on the Kibo is unfortunately on pin 15, which is very sad. Uh, in looking at 
pin out XYZ. Coincidentally, also maintained by Gadgetoid Ike. Uh, quite a few hats and bonnets utilize pin 15. So if I have a critique of the Atmega Zero, it's directed strictly at pin 15. Physical pin 15. To be fair though, a lot of hats are compatible on the pinout level, such as the Pi Glow, which we saw, uh, and that uses I squared C. A lot of hats and bonnets use I squared C. So there's that. Um, if you search around, you'll also find that quite a few of the more common Raspberry Pi hats do have some unofficial Arduino code, uh, such as the unicorn hat. I do think that hats with the Atmega Zero are still a cool concept though. It's even with that pin 15 issue, especially since there's so many people out there who for one reason or another are just so very anti-Python. And as we know, most hats, you know, they're gonna have a Python library because on a Raspberry Pi. And I know that you're out there because you all find me and you all tweet at me and all of my projects, if I reference that it's in CircuitPython and you let me know, you let me know that if, if I had just written it in C, it would just be so much better. It would run faster, smarter, stronger. It could save the world. It could end world hunger. And even though it's doing exactly what you want it to do right now, it's written in Python. So it's just awful. It needs to be written in C. So here's your chance, folks, if you want to take some hardware that had Python in mind when it was going, you can now, you know, port it to C. Here's your chance, friends. I think the goal right now of the Atmega Zero is to kind of create its own ecosystem with its own set of shields that benefit from the form factor Raspberry Pi Zero uh, with mounting holes and this 2x20 header. The header that comes with the Zero 2 is also color coded, which is one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. In fact, if I was going to give a critique of the Raspberry Pi, it would be that it doesn't have a color coded header. I love a color coded header. I do. I love it. Now, creating a Kibo style shield specifically for the Atmega Zero, that could be a fun project. Uh, I've made a keyboard shield before uh, for an Arduino Uno, and I think that a very, very small macro keyboard uh, could be kind of great. Problems aren't really problems. They're just opportunities for new projects. So the Atmega Zero, it's a fun board, and its creator, Eddie, is a very good human. Uh, so definitely something to check out if you love the Pi Zero form factor, but only have eyes for the Arduino IDE. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. Check out the links below to this board uh, and all accessories. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.